Hi friends, so today we are painting these fun little tulips. Um, now I was actually looking for the taller ones and I couldn't find them, but these are a good reference, I feel. So I have already created a little swatch list here um, of my greens and pinks and golds, I think go beautifully. I practiced my C strokes and I practice my thin lines and a little bit thicker. Um, so we're going to be using all of these strokes. Now keep in mind, I do list these on Etsy, my little practice sheet, and I put my notes and list my colors. Um, I do use all Winsor Newton paints and um, hopefully that helps you. And then I also, put in there my original that you're going to watch me paint right now. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm using my 140 pound um, cold pressed paper. I've got my number eight Velvet Touch Princeton brush round because I like the shapes it can get and the tip that can create some really uh, thin lines. I've got my two cups of water, one to wash, one to rinse, and my paper towel. So I am set. So let's go ahead and start these, um, excuse me, I'm gonna adjust my paper a bit. There we go. I'm going to try and get as close in as I can for you. Um, and hopefully you can get a good look at these brush strokes. So I'm using a, I'm going to use this opera pink and I'm just going to add some water to it like so. And then let's do our first brush stroke. So let me try and get zoom in a little bit closer here for you. Okay, I hope that helps. And the first brush stroke is going to be thin, thick, and thin, just like this. And then you can go ahead and draw in the other side of that. Um, hopefully the glare isn't too bad here. When I get closer, the, the um, light can sometimes do that. And then point, press, and come in again, just like that, okay? You can go back in and kind of fill that in if you like. Okay, so we've got kind of our first little tulip there. We'll come back to that. What I want to do is while this is wet, I want to add in my green. So I've got my olive and my sap green here on my palette and I'm just going to dab in. So using the point of my brush, just like that and see how it, it kind of flows into the pink, that's what we want. And I'm just using the tip of my brush and then bring the petal down, okay? So let's do another one of these tulips in the same color. So I've got my paint here, the consistency of tea. And we're gonna come back to this one as well. And let's do another one right here. So point, press, and come around. Now you can kind of fill that in if you want. Okay, and then one second. Okay, sorry about that. I had a little thing going on over there. Okay, so let's go to our second petal here. Point, press, and bring it around. Just like that. Okay, and we might put one in the background here. Like so. And then while, so if you noticed there, I use the point of my brush to get the tip and then I put some pressure 
to widen my brush as I'm pulling down. Okay, so that's how I get that width in my petal. Now I'm gonna go in while this is wet and I'm going to add some of that green. Okay, so let's tap. And as you see, that just starts spreading beautifully. Okay, love that. We love that look. So let's go ahead and go in with one more. So I'm picking up my paint. There we go. And let's do another one right here. So point, press. Now I had a little bit of green in my brush, just like that. And I actually love that some of that pigment settled into the bottom. I think that's really pretty. Notice here how that green is blending up through the flower. Same with this one. That is the effect that we want. We love that. So let's add another petal here. So I'm going into my pink paint again. And let's just add another one here. Point, press, just like that. Okay, maybe one over here on the side point, press, something like that. Okay, I'm using different values of this same color so that I can get some ped, you know, some interest and some depth to my painting. I might, since this is still wet, I just tapped in a little bit there, maybe here. While it's wet and it gets that nice beautiful blend so i'm rinsing my brush washing and rinsing my brush and then i'm just scraping my brush very lightly on the side of my water container so let's go in here and add the green stem while this is still wet so i'm going in i'm grabbing some of my green paint and mixing it a little bit, just that T consistency. And then I'm going to touch in, barely touch where this wet pink paint is. Look at that. Using the tip of my brush and coming down, just like that. Okay. Just gonna extend that one a little bit. So there you go, you've got these beautiful tulips. We used all of the same brush strokes which practice beforehand. The C curve, so you're using the point of your brush, pull and then start applying pressure and then lift up, okay? Now we're going to do these beautiful long leaves that these flowers have. So I'm going into my green paint. I noticed that the tulip leaves are quite thick at the bottom. They um, don't really narrow at the bottom and they can even curl. So let's do some of those. So the tulip at the bottom of the leaf kind of wraps around the stem so i'm putting light pressure maybe pressing a little bit more and then even curls around so look at that isn't that beautiful let's do another one here so kind of point at the end start pressing in and bring that petal, I'm sorry, that leaf, right around the stem, just like that. Now I do notice that the ends of the stems do tend to get a little lighter. I'm going to put one more layer over this one, okay? So you always work in layers with watercolors. Um, you can always go darker, it's very challenging to go lighter you you pretty much can't so let's just add another layer of that green over this i'm going to actually 
create a little curl here and go right over that leaf. So I've created a layer which darkened it. Now I could also go into that with my CAD yellow. So rinsing my brush, I scrape it off on the side of my container so it's not dripping. And let's go into that CAD yellow. And let's just see what we can create as a, another layer over that leaf. Okay, so pressing, look at that. Isn't that pretty? And this is still wet, so I can actually go into that as well. And this is dry, so remember when we go wet into dry, we're not going to get that spread and bloom. Okay, because watercolors go where water is. And if I'm applying wet paint to a dry surface, it's not going to spread. If I'm applying wet paint into wet, it's going to spread out and follow the water. Okay, so let's practice another leaf here, remembering just as much in your leaves I'm sorry, just as much as you did with your petals, do the same with your leaves. You want to use darker colors, so a darker hue, darker value of this hue, which means I'm using more paint than water. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to really load my brush and with much more paint than water. So watch what this does. Point, press, and join up with that stem. So what that did is that made this leaf pop out, okay? Let's do another one. Let's see, where should we put another one? Let's do one right here. So point, press, just like that. Now we could add some up in here as well. So maybe smaller ones. Point, press. Okay. Maybe tuck one behind here. Point, press. Just like that. And then I'm going to go in again with a watered down version of this color so that it kind of creates the feeling that this leaf is in the back. So point, press, like so. Now you can dry your brush off and then pick up some of that paint if you want. So that leaf looks like it's kind of in the background. What I wanna do is play with this and I'm gonna go in with a very dark version of that green so lots of pigment okay and let's put a leaf maybe right here point press just like that so see how that popped out like that let's do maybe a light one so i'm going to rinse my brush scrape off that extra paint and make a very light version of that green again. Maybe even add some of that yellow. Sorry. And let's create a leaf in the background. So I'm using a lighter value of that paint right here. Point. Okay. There we go. So see that? Now you wanna make sure whenever you're painting with watercolors that you're not painting right next to a, so when I painted this, I made sure the leaves next to it were dry, otherwise they could spread into each other. So I think that's good. I think what I might, um, 
enjoy doing is maybe creating one more darker petal here just to give you that practice of adding in a darker value. So I'm going in full paint, still with water, but a lot of paint. And I'm just going to add a tulip petal here, point, press. Look at that. Isn't that interesting? And then maybe one in the background, like so. Okay, now I'm getting a little bit of a spread there that I really don't want. So what I'm gonna do is dry off my brush and I can pick that up, okay? And then maybe just something like that, okay? So I hope this was helpful for you. Um, I will list this on my Etsy. Um, I will sign it and put the name of the tutorial on the month and the date. And then I will include my little swatches and the brush strokes that I used. I'm going to zoom up right here, folks. So hold on one second. There we go. And I will add this and I will put all my notes of the colors, the brush strokes, um, practice a page of these and then practice a few practice, you know, little practice tulips and then go to your final painting and have fun with this. I hope this was helpful. Um, we use the wet into wet technique a lot. Remember to create that interest and that depth so your painting doesn't look flat. You're using more paint for a darker value of the greens and the pinks and then in some areas more water so you kind of get this feeling of depth and your painting isn't as flat that's the always the first thing i say to add and i think that's about it i hope this all helps you and if you have any questions please reach out make sure and grab my free ebook because um, that has a lot of these strokes in it you can refer to and i'll list all the colors in my description and all of my supplies okay thank you so much for being here with me and i i hope these are helpful for you if you have any questions please email me or reply below and i hope to see you again happy painting